I think I made it public information in a Behind the Mask earlier this year, but I grew up in a very rural town in the state of Vermont in America. My family is spread pretty wide across the Northeast, with people from both my parents' sides in New Hampshire and Massachusetts, as well as some distant family in Florida, Idaho, Oregon, and California. We would have to travel great distances to participate participate in stuff like weddings, birthday parties, and family reunions. When you were just a kid in the 90s, this usually ended up with long road trips and a really good CD player with plenty of action figures. During the two hour road trips it took to get to my grandparents house in Massachusetts, my siblings and I would be allowed to bring a backpack that carried the essentials we knew we'd want to use while we were far from home. My sisters would take books and CDs my brother and I would pack action figures and trading cards. The one thing we could never bring, for fear of ruining it or breaking it somehow in the travel, was our original PlayStation 1. That thing was permanently set up at home, and I'd have to starve myself of advancing in Spyro, Crash, and Metal Gear Solid for a complete 3 sometimes four day weekend. I've been a gamer from a very young age, and my parents and grandparents definitely picked up on that as well. That's why at some point or another, my grandparents bought the second generation of PS1 for us to use while we stayed over at their house every now and then. We were eventually allowed to bring two or three games for our trips to Massachusetts, but my uncle was also taken with the PlayStation, buying a few games for me and my cousins to use when they visited my grandparents. Among those titles were games like Space Hulk, Vengeance of the Blood Angels, Tekken, and a little known fighting game created by Dream Factory and published by Squaresoft in 1996, Tobal No. 1. This game was Dream Factory's first ever release, as well as Square's first ever on a console that used CDs instead of cartridges. Tobal was unique for its time thanks to the simplistic graphic style, presenting characters in an environments made up of a few polygons and flat textures. Alongside the fighting game base of a tournament and versus mode, the game also includes a quest mode, where the player goes through a dungeon crawler that uses the fighting mode during its enemy encounters. With the official release, the game also included a demo disc for the upcoming Final Fantasy VII, as well as trailers for Final Fantasy Tactics, Bushido Blade, and Saga Frontier. Tobal No. 1 topped a Japanese sales charts after its release, becoming the 8th best selling video game of 1996 in that country with 750,000 copies sold. In America, the game received something closer to a cult following, selling only 99,000 copies but receiving near universal acclaim in that reception. One of the more remarkable things about this game that should be highlighted is the inclusion of several staff members that would go on to create legacy impacts in the JRPG genre and in the video game medium altogether. Dream Factory was founded by one Sheiichi Ishii, one of the lead designers on revolutionary Sega titles like Virtua Racing and Virtua Fighter, and after becoming director for the first two Tekken games, he founded the company Dream Factory in 1995 and went on to create some of the most noteworthy fighting games in the late 90s and early 2000s. Games such as Air Guys, God Bless the Ring, The Bouncer, and Kakuto Chojin, Back Alley Brutal are all attributed to his direction. When creating the gameplay style of Tobal No. 1, Ichi believed that because the game was being produced for home consoles instead of the popular arcades in big cities, the game would need to cater to a single player experience over that of the direct multiplayer combat. This led to a more intimate approach to the combat sequences and eventually the inspiration behind the game's quest mode. The soundtrack in Tobal is also created by some of the best in the industry, including Yasunori Mitsuda, Masashi Hamauzu, Junya Nakano, Kenji Ito, and Yoko Shimomura. Because of such a diversity working on the music and themes for the game, lots of different genres came together to deliver an experience unlike other fighting games. Notes of hip-hop, 
groove, jazz, and ambient flow through each stage, providing uniqueness to every battle. Another notable addition to mention, and the entire reason for making this video in the first place, is that the main character designer and artist on the project was one Akira Toriyama, the creator and illustrator for popular manga series Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball. Toriyama created the design for every character in the game, from the fighters in the tournament to the creatures and bosses in the dungeons. As such, he also was allowed to create the lore for the game's world and its characters. He created a Toriyama trademarked fighters tournament, where the contestants are invited to the planet Tobal to compete over the rights to the planet's energy rich or Malmoran. Though the ending is the same for each character, with them winning the tournament and claiming the prize from the leader of Tobal, Yudan, and celebrating in the throne room of the palace. Toriyama created eight standard characters, as well as three unlockable boss enemies, to compete in the tournament. In addition to that, if the player can complete the entirety of the game's quest mode, including the 30 floor dungeon and beating the strongest boss at the end, the player can unlock a character known as Toriyama Robo, a character exclusively created created after Toriyama himself, and isn't seen nor fightable anywhere else in the game. This brings the total amount of available fighters up to 12, and each contain a wholly original moveset consisting of high, middle, and low attacks, capable of combining together with grapple and jump moves in a 3D space. In the game's manual, every fighter's background information is readily available, including that of the planet and its origin. Toriyama provided enough information to establish an entire universe just for use in this PS1 3D fighting game, and it's awesome. As many of you probably already know, or if you don't and are clicking on this video out of curiosity, I have some awful news for you. On March 1st, 2024, Akira Toriyama passed away after suffering from an acute subdural hematoma, or a severe blood clot in his brain. He was 68 years old. A private funeral, attended by family and close friends, was held shortly after, and his death was announced a week later. He was paid tribute by many fellow artists in the industry, with works from One Piece creator Ichiro Oda, Naruto creator Masashi Kishimoto, and video game designer Yuji Horii, who partnered with Toriyama to create Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger. Public mourning in Japan lasted several days, social media influencers created massive movements as well, with many admirers expressing their grief on YouTube and Twitter even reaching the point of overshadowing U.S. President Joe Biden's State of the Union address on trending and popular pages. To say that the world received a massive blow in the entertainment industry is an understatement, and this kind of worldwide mourning doesn't happen very often. Toriyama touched the lives of many people the world over, from manga lovers to animators and writers. Dragon Ball, Chrono Trigger, and Blue Dragon are all hits in their own right and are cited as inspirations for designers of all entertainment mediums. With several movies, video games, and manga under his belt, Toriyama was celebrated even before his passing and will continue to be so for a long, long time. I will admit that I'm not a huge fan of Dragon Ball, and that's not because I don't like the show or the books or anything like that, it's more because I just never got around to viewing them. I've only ever watched maybe 12 episodes of Dragon Ball Z, and I've never even read a chapter of any of his manga. But what I have done is played games that he's worked on directly, and each of them were ones that I loved. I had an original copy of Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo when I was a young kid. The SNES was my first ever home console, and I remember having the game and being absolute dog water at the real-time combat and cooperative party moves. I never got that far into the game, and I regrettably never got to play it often either, as after my family purchased a PlayStation, my parents saw fit to toss out the cartridge consoles since we'd be playing them less. I've since bought the digital version for my PSN and Steam accounts, but I crave to get my hands on a Super Nintendo version to relive those memories again. What I do remember more profoundly 
profusely, however, are the days in the summers of my adolescence at my grandparents' house, challenging my brother, cousins, and uncle to a few rounds of toe ball number one. We'd play time challenges to see who finished the tournament faster, or spend hours rotating fighters and versus matches. We'd work together as we explored the maze-like dungeons of quest mode, finding hidden bosses and randomly generated potions that either gave us a huge advantage or massive hindrances. Even to this day, I haven't been able to finish the 34th dungeon and unlocked Toriyama Robo, but with the passing of the man himself, I feel like I'm suddenly obligated to. This video was created out of the desire to appreciate the work that Mr. Toriyama did to make works of art that touched people all over the world. I am but one of many millions of people that were a fan of his projects, and this might just be a shout into the cacophony of people currently mourning and doing the same as me, but it's my voice all the same, and the memories created through interacting with his art are just as important as all the rest, so here we go. I just wanted to say thank you, Akira Toriyama, for the works that you did, for the many pages that you wrote, for the thousands of pictures that you drew, for the hearts that you made for your characters, for the expanses of the worlds that you created, for the memories that your hard work and dedication were able to give me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Know that the things that you brought into this world are respected and enjoyed by people from all nations and backgrounds. Hopefully, in whatever world you're in right now, it brings you as much peace and happiness as the kind you were able to deliver to everybody that found it in you. Our world lost an amazing, creative mind, but you and your work will never be forgotten. You will be an inspiration for many for as long as we are allowed to create art. Rest in peace, Mr. Toriyama. We will definitely miss you. That just about does it for me tonight, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to stay awesome, be kind and rewind, and have a wonderful night. Pour one out for Mr. Toriyama tonight. Excelsior. <laughs>